All right, I'm Nick. Out in the garage, have the Old Town Sportsman Salty 120 PDL behind me. And today I am going to show you how I have decided to install my fish finder on there. Now this is a Garmin 94 SV. Um, if you've watched any recent videos from the Salty, I had it temporarily installed on the Salty. Uh, this is the same fish finder I used the last year for all of our offshore charters and fishing. Fantastic unit. The 94 comes with this giant transducer. This is a 51, a GT51. It is massive. I've already had it installed on there. I actually made a different mount than no one's seen before. Just this little guy, right? And after you make so many of these different parts, you realize that small and less complicated means it has less ways to break, right? This guy just mounts right here, which allows this wire to go straight through the scupper hole. No pinching, no moving. And we're going to get this mount up on the website because I think it'll work much better with like the GT54 than the current mount that we have that goes in the front three holes. Uh, been meaning to get around to it. It's been extremely busy. But I'm going to go over every step from using the Hobie three-way through-hole kit uh, to drilling the holes to where we drill the holes where I decided to put the battery. For this install, we'll be using the FPV power. Now, I really do prefer the Nakua system, but I had this on hand. It was Skylar, I bought it from Skylar. And obviously we have batteries and fish finders everywhere. So we're gonna use that one for this. The 94 does use quite a bit more power than the 73. The 10 amp hour does do a good job, but we're gonna see what the 17 and a half amp hour does. I've used it a bit over the last few weeks. I don't have any complaints. It's a battery, right? It's waterproof. It does what it's supposed to do. We're gonna get this all installed, right? The first thing we're gonna do though, we're gonna install the transducer. We're gonna switch to the GoPro, record the transducer install. We got it up on the table, so that should make things a bit easier. We'll cut around a bit. I'll probably ramble, and that's that. The goal for the week is to film a series of videos on how I've decided to rig the Salty. This is the first video, so let's go. All right, so we installed this piece right here. It's our mount. This piece is just a shim because the kayak kind of goes upwards. It's gonna make it sit level. Obviously, I experimented with different sizes. Whatever you have, you can just stick there to do well. Uh, this is the salty topper, which is gonna go in that hole and the wing nut that holds it in place. We're gonna install it backwards because we can go into the settings and change scanning left and scanning right for side scan. So, wire goes through there, comes up like so, get everything lined up. Now this salty, I'm gonna spin it like this, right? Uh, it's gonna kind of push down there in place and kind of compress, which is a little challenging sometimes. But once you get the wing nut on, it'll, oh, I failed. I can't get the wing nut out. This happens when you film things. All right, so wing nuts on. Just kidding, fell out again. Now we're good. All right, uh, the goal is to have the wire come out this direction like that. That'll tighten down. Now you don't need to like hawk out and go crazy. As soon as the transducer stops moving, you are good to go. You can see, if you watch the scupper, it's kind of compressing down into the top. That's what we want. That is why it was designed to be flexible. It'll compress down in there. And now if you look below, the transducer is flush, level, out of the way, can't hit anything, and side scan still works. It's already tested it out. So we're gonna use this Hobie three-way through hole kit, uh, super easy to install, it has no backing, so you can just put three screws in, but you need to drill a hole, right? And it's a, we're gonna use the hole saw bit, it's a one and three eighths of an inch, which you need a flat surface, okay? I wanted to put it in here originally, but decided that this is flat enough, you just can't put it in these curves, okay? And I didn't wanna put it on the bottom of the kayak because this thing has a whole lot of water come over the front of it, and I didn't want any issues. So, we're all set up. We're just gonna take it, I already kind of marked it off, but 
it is smart to use a Sharpie and make sure you're safe. Just make sure you're on a flat surface and find the center. So here goes nothing. All right, that's how you drill a hole in your kite. Remember, you should always measure 75 times, cut once, all that good stuff. Nothing back there. We're gonna be able to fish a wire through there and then do the rest of the rigging back there. But for now, we're just gonna get this through here and I'll show you some videos of it in a second. All right, so after you drill the hole, clean it up a bit, you're gonna run the gasket down through the wire. That way it sits like this. And then you can proceed to run the cable through there uh, you need to pick out the grommet from your kit that fits around the wire the best and then we're going to plug the other two holes because I only need one. We're just going to go in and we'll come back out down there, okay? So uh, typically I would run some kind of wire through there, but since we don't need to pull anything back through, I'm just going to force this through there and I don't think that we will have any issues. I think it will run right down to the side of the kayak. Uh, ideally, we'll be able to go back to the opening in the middle of the kayak and find it here in a second, and then just pull it all the way through. Just kidding. Hasn't made it through there yet, but we're just going to keep feeding it. Worst thing comes to worst, I'll just tip the kayak off its butt, and the wire will fall through. Not too big a deal with this small kayak. Try doesn't help that it. it's all the way up on this table. I can't reach very far. But that is not a big deal. I will pull that out of there later. I want to show you guys this part so you can see it. Now this will come like this. This piece will go like that. Remember I already told you that we're just gonna plug, wrong direction, we're just gonna plug two of these holes. They're not gonna leak like that. And then this one will go around there. It comes with these screws. You need to use a small drill bit to drill a pilot hole. And we're going to use this gasket to make those pilot holes in the right spot. Then you'll use a regular Phillips head screwdriver to tighten those down. You do not need to install any kind of marine goop or anything like that while doing it. Alright, so once you have this gasket on the wire, we're just going to slide it in place. Put it on there backwards, I think. We're just going to slide it in place. Just kidding. Put it on there backwards again. Gonna get it lined up, slide it in place. Always found having a flat head just to make sure it's easier to push in place it is nice. Once you get it all level, you'll be able to slide it just a bit and get it in the perfect spot. You can also just take the gasket, put it around here first. It's always way harder doing this stuff on video than it is just doing it. That guy will sit however you want it to sit, just like that. Now we will drill our pilot holes, like so. We will take this screw, put it in place, and get it started. Remember, don't tighten it too tight. You don't want to strip it out. We just put that first one in so it wouldn't spin. Now we have our three holes that will line up. With no issues, okay? So make sure you just take your time. Don't over torque anything. Don't drill holes if you aren't confident in what you're doing. And that's that. You'll see the gasket compress a little bit when you're doing it. 
You don't want to go too tight. You should deform it. Uh, and there you go. Pretty easy. It looks pretty nice in the front. It's not the best kayak to install fish finder on, so that's not too bad. Now let's move on. All right, so wire, right? Got it out of there. We're going to use another Hobie three-way plug, Hobie through-hole three-way plug, such a long name, to bring it out that side. We're going to put it right here in this opening. Uh, I know that I'm going to mount it on this handle, um, so I want it to come out right here so there aren't any wires. When I originally just, you know, simply installed it for a temporary solution, I just ran the wires in and out of here. I don't like that, so I'm going to make it look much cleaner. I'm going to put a hole right here on that side. I'll let you guys see it when it's done. Uh, same exact method as drilling the hole up there. Uh, just go slow. Not a bad spot. Make sure you go low enough. You know there is a insert right here, so you just got to go in the middle and you won't run into any issues. All right, that's the location we're going to use. Just gonna give it a little mark. like that you have another hole clean it up a bit and then repeat the process from before all right so the next thing you do is you got to get your wires out of there right this is not that bad of a spot you can reach pretty easy pull that wire up you can just put this tag in back in there it's not that important really need it to be out on the outside of the kayak. It just tells you the model number on the transducer. That guy will come out as well. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the gasket we did before. And this, we need to make sure that this goes outside. And then you'll have plenty of room. Once this is installed, you'll still be able to pull on these a little bit to slide more wire out if you need it. Uh, these are two pretty big wires. Obviously, the kit has a variety of wire sizes. This is probably the one we need to put both of them out of the same hole. That'll work. It's going to be a tight fit, but you'd rather it be tight than it leak water, okay? Um, I'm going to get that rigged up. I'll get that installed, and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right, so we're going to mount it over here on this handle where I had it for the temporary install, too. One thing to be mindful about is I like to put the wires pointed in the direction I'm going to use them, right? There's no reason to put them out the holes on the side if you want it to come up vertically. Uh, we're going to use this ram mount. This is a one inch ball. Uh, you can use an inch and a half ball for such a big fish finder, but I like the low profile of the one inch. Uh, every once in a while I'll break one of these balls, but they're like nine bucks. Uh, I usually only break maybe one every year and a half, two years, so I don't really worry about it. Uh, and it held up the nine inch fish finder without any issues last year, except for when I did with a fish bag. Uh, so this is going there. We'll just set it right here for now. Uh, we'll get these wires hooked up so you can see nothing to it. And then I'll show you the battery placement. Got a little piece of Velcro in there. All right, those are hooked up. Those are watertight. Got a little too much wire. The nice thing is that these guys will just slide back down in there nice and easy. Then I can adjust how much wire it will be. Um, I will probably end up running the wire through this hole like I normally do. That way it's not sticking out here as far. It'll come through here and come down. For the sake of the video, just wanted to get it put together real quick. Now, as far as the battery goes, here's the FPV. Obviously, this thing is waterproof. Here is my cable. Uh, I did leave it up here for a temporary solution one time. Wasn't really a big fan. And I really do hate having it in there because I hate having to remove the seat to get to the battery. Um, it's pretty dark in there. There's a piece of Velcro in there. No reason to look in there. A piece of Velcro down there as well. Uh, FPV, waterproof connection, comes up locks in place and then it will just bell curl into the bottom and that's that we'll put the lid back on put the seat on 
And then our fish finder install, although not tight over here, is complete. Uh, so let's go front to back real quick so you guys can see it. Uh, scupper is installed, goes into the side of the kayak, runs internally, comes out right here. Uh, I did notice that this wall is kind of a bit flimsy compared to that wall. Uh, that's one thing you'll notice any rollerboard or kayak, there'll always be a spot where the plastic's not as thick. I don't think we'll have any kind of issues with that. Uh, if you do notice something like that somewhere else, like down here, that could be problems. But on that right there, no big deal. Comes out of the kayak, goes right here, mounts to the handle. Uh, this will actually be kind of, it's weird to see without the seat, but this will sit out here like this. And then my cup holder is still usable because the seat will be way up here, all right? Uh, other people would choose to run the wires, come out here, and then mount a mounting system up here. I like it to be closer to me. That way I can use it without leaning forward and I can still land King Mackerel, Red Snapper. I can still use my gaff up here and it's not in the way. It also makes it very easy to just loosen this and tuck it in or fold it back or fold it down and spin this out of my way when I launch or land in the surf. That's that. That is how I chose to install the fish finder on the Old Town Sportsman Salty 120 PDL. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section or shoot me an email at nick at navarchivefishing.com. Thanks for watching. All right, so I did cut a corner. I didn't use wire. So I had to use my caulking gun to shove it up in there. It actually sits in there pretty good. How do I do it? And I shoved my arm up there, the 90 degree angle, caught the wire, and here we are. All right, so do what you gotta do. Wire might be easier. I was being lazy. It worked.